o'clock on a Saturday night here in a um, Aussie Mail headquarters, which means it is time for um, our live session. Uh, just bear with me for a minute, guys, while I make sure everything's all right. Not sure if anybody's seeing me yet. I can see we've got people in chat. Um, okay. All right, I'm getting um, a bad stream message, Chris. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what that means. All right. Oh, this might be the problem. Can anyone see me yet? Yes. Because I can't see me. All right. I can't, so I don't know what's going on there. Oh, you can see me? Beautiful, because I can't see me in my own preview, so I have no idea. All right, beautiful. All right, hey, everybody. Good, good, as long as you can see me. Are you scroll down to the bottom of the page? Yes, done. Oh, okay. Yep, I'm at the bottom of the page, and my preview is showing the holding okay. image. All right, yeah, we've got we've got Wes and Dawn, Elizabeth, hey Susie, Jenny, Di, hey Annette. Well, I'm glad you can see me, Susie, because I'm I'm going blind at the moment because I, I don't know what's what um, YouTube's showing. You are hunting wabbits. Shh, be very very quiet. Okay, beautiful. In all my radiance, oh Wes, <laughs> take some lessons from Wes, babe. <laughs> okay. We missed the hello right earlier tonight. <laughs> uh, I haven't done it, guys. I went to a festival last night and um, Kira and I got some henna done, except I smooshed it here before it, it dried. But, you know, Kira's looks better because she's got lovely 15 year old hands. I've got old lady's hands. But, yes, we did that last night. All right. Well, we seem to have a few people on. That's good. That's good. So we might. I'm just looking through the comments, see if I've got everybody. Okay. Hey, Julie. How you going, love? Up to any mischief lately? All right. So we'll make a start then, and uh, we'll see how we go. Look, this is the first time I've actually done it, Sharon. Um. Because I've got such pale, freckly skin, I never thought um, never thought to get henna on my skin. Actually, I thought it would clash with the freckles too much. But Chris assured me that it would be okay, so I had a go at it last night. And um, I'm addicted already, and, and we're going to throw a henna party and all sorts of fun things. But there you go. Mailer's hands. Yeah, big, short, stubby fingers. That's my man hands. That's what I've got. My daughter, thankfully, doesn't. She's got lovely, girly hands. You never, Julie? Come on. Your nose must be growing. All right, let's go. Um, so our week tonight is Gridlock Byzantine. Uh, I've aimed this at um, an intermediate mailer. I know some of you have done this before. Wes, I know you've definitely done this one before. Um, I've seen a piece of your work. But um, hopefully this will be a new way to others. So I'll flip this over to the other view and I'll show you some pieces and we'll get started. Okay. All right. So the usual um, four pieces made up for you. So this one is um, 14 gauge, 1.6 mils. And we've done this in 6 millimeter ID. Now, as you can see, I haven't done any of this in the colors. We don't have any colors that are an exact match for the size. Um, and you have lovely girly hands. Where's lovely? <laughs> well, I'll give you my man hands. <laughs> I'll have your girly hands. Um, I actually like this weave in the silver. So I didn't try too hard to try and find combinations. I think if you did uh, mixed gauges, you might uh, be able to do it in colour, but just the straight, the same gauges, um, we don't have anything that's an exact match. So 14 gauge 1.6 mil, uh, 6 millimetre ID. The kits went out that went out got this one, which is our 16 gauge 1.2 millimetre. 
uh, the ring sizes are 4.5 millimeter ID. So um, it significantly um, goes down in size. It is a chunky weave. 18 gauge is 3.75 mils. And 20 gauge is 3 mil. Whoops, do that one. There we go. So this is one of these weaves I find gets better as you go down um, in size. I'm not a fan of the 14 gauge myself, but every time I did a thinner gauge, um, I liked it a little bit more. So 18 and 20 gauge would be my preferred ones in this. Um, I'd like to see this actually in sterling silver, something like that. I'm quite taken with this weave. Okay. So we'll make a move, um, demonstrating it in 14 gauge as we normally would. So the first part of this um, weave is to create the gridlock weave, or the gridlock part of this, which is a European 4-in-1 variant. Uh, so to start our weave, take an open ring, pop on two of your pre-closed rings. Hey, Daryl. Glad to see you and close that up and at this point I like to pop a twist tie in it gives me it gives me um, my handle to hold on to and it also helps keep the weave um, under control so as we would with European 4 and one we produce our Mickey Mouse ears I shouldn't say Mickey Mouse should I mouse ears I don't want to be done for copyright okay and we're going to take another open ring and we're going to feed that down through the front there and up through the back. And before we close that off, we're going to pop on another two jump rings. So, so far it looks exactly like European 4 and one almost exactly like exactly like European Form 1 and for European Form 1 we would layer our rings like this so the difference with gridlock is is the layering of the rings so where we would normally lie this second pair flat on top of the first pair we're actually going to angle that pair away from us so that they're no longer lying it's a little hard to show you so that they're no longer lying on top of each other that they're angled away And while we're holding them in that position, we're going to take another open ring and we're going to feed it through those rings there. So that's a little bit easier now. You can see that those rings are forming a V. They're angled away from each other instead of on top of each other. So pop the open ring through the two of them. And before you close it up, Put two of your pre-closed rings on and close that. Okay. So we then need to position our new pair of rings. And again, we want to form that V. This time the V going the other way. So this time the V was um, they were touching down the bottom this time we want our rings to touch up the top so we force them to sit like this so they're not laying on top of each other they're just touching and we're going to put one of our open rings through the rings like that. So you can see the pattern there. And before we close it up, pop on two more pre-closed rings. Okay. So this time 
we're going to push those rings away from us so that the V runs this way. They're touching down the bottom like we did back with that first pair. So holding them away so that they're not laying down on the previous pair. We take out one of our open rings and we feed it through the top of those previous pair and before closing pop on our pre-closed rings and you just keep doing that for the length of your bracelet so this time we want the V to go the other way we want the top of our rings to touch So we push them out this way you've got to hold on to it Stephen you really do have to hold on to it into position until you feed um, the single ring in and then by keeping the weave tight you keep it in position so you can see I'm not letting go of these keeping hold of these two rings until I feed that one through and then popping the two closed rings on. Oh, Catherine, I was at a festival last night and I visited the henna booth, so that's what's going on with my hand. Okay, and again, this time, because last time the tops touched, we want the bottom of our rings to touch. So as I said, keeping that pressure on there and feeding your ring through. Now I'm going to close off here because this is the end of my prepped rings. But you would just keep going the length of your bracelet, making sure that you end with the last ring being on top. Okay, so you can see our first single ring here in the middle is on top. Valley folds and mountain folds. Thank you. Because I'm sitting here thinking words. I need better words. <laughs> and you can see uh, I don't do origami in it. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right. So make sure. So what do I call this bit here and then and then? Is that the plateau? these rings on the top the center rings so make sure that where that uh, first ring is positioned which in, in this case is on the top your last ring is also in the same position so you don't want it to be um, down in the valley you want it to be up on the mountain top now to help keep this all in place um, I like to put a twist tie through the other end um, because if it folds in on itself it gives you something to pull taut and you can see the weave then comes into place. Um, if you've got experience with European 4-in-1, you know that this end ring can often flip and then you've got to go through the hassle of putting it into the, the right position again. I find if you've got a twist tie on the end, you've just got to give it a little pull and it pops into position. All right, so there we are with our, our valley deeps and our mountains highs. And this is gridlock. So this weave alone is gridlock. So you could whip that up and sell that. Um, look, it's not, a, it's, I don't think it's a particularly attractive weave, but there you go, to each their own. All right, so before we move on to the next bit, we might as well do our, our little giveaway doohickey. So I'll move that aside. So what we're going to give away tonight is just a simple tool case. It looks like this. Now the tools aren't coming with it. This is just for demonstration purposes. So you just pop your tools inside. And there's actually space for three or, you know, I'm sure you could do more if you got tricky. And they just all fold up on each other. And you've got a little tool case to carry. All right, so we're giving one of these away tonight. 
So if you're interested in getting just a tool case, not my tools, um, pop uh, in the comments section. Chris wants to know what your favourite horror show is. So I don't think we're particularly sticking for movies. If it's a TV series or something like that, you can throw that in. But Chris wants to know uh, what's your favourite horror show. And we can pop that in the um, comment section. Uh, we'll allocate you a, a number later and do a random number draw and we will let you guys know um, probably tomorrow morning um, who's the winner of um, our tool case. Okay. So if you guys do that, your favourite horror show. So only while we're live, if you pop that in the comments and we'll put your name in the draw and um, take it from there. The Velcro, <laughs> oh, Rocky Horror. Does that count as a horror show? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll give it. <laughs> Ash versus Evil Dead. Oh, good grief. <laughs> Nightmare on L Street. At least you're being serious, Christopher. Ash vs. Evil Dead's a horror. Oh, yeah, it's not a real one. <laughs> Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> no, versus Game of Thrones. Yeah, that could be pretty horrific. Mm. Pretty gory. Grim is horror enough. Okay. Thinking. All right. I thought I'd see some definite 80s classics or something, but apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So while you guys are typing that up, I'll move on to the next bit. All right. So to do this, uh, take up your finished gridlock piece. With this one, make the first ring... On the bottom so if you hold your piece like this I know when we started it was on the top I like to have it on the bottom this time okay so I put that little ring on the bottom and I want you to actually turn your weave on the edge so that we can see the mountains and the valleys and our first set of rings that we're going to be working with um, Head starts spinning around. That's the pea soup. That's um, which one's that, Chris? Pea soup. Yeah, yeah. Head, um, what's exorcist. Exorcist. Yeah, that's a freaky movie. Now that now see now we're getting the we're Pea getting it right. Okay. All right. So we're going to work with this first pair of rings here, and we're simply going to take up. Oh, saw. Yeah. You're right, uh, things like the ring and um, what are some of those other ones? The Japanese ones, horrific. All right, so we're going to go simply through that first pair of edge rings. And we're going to close that ring up. And we're going to flip that to what is effectively the front of the weave for now. Okay, so that just sits there on the front, as you can see. And then we're going to go into this next one here. So we're going to go one, ri one ring over from here. We're going to go through the back. And then we're going to come in down through that ring that we just placed. At the same time going through that edge ring as well. So we're picking up three rings in total. I'll show you again. So going into the next pair, oops, wait a minute, here we go. Next V, we go through the back, bring it up and go down through the ring that we just placed at the same time going through the edge ring. And we close that up. And that one sort of falls to the back of your weave. Doesn't fall to the front. Okay, we then move down to the next V formation that we have. 
point again coming up through the back of that new ring and this time we're going to go up through the ring that we just added before and continuing up through that edge ring and we close that up. Oh, did Stephen go, did he? Yeah. Food. Okay. Hmm? Food. Food? Food, fair enough. We haven't had our food yet. Okay, so again, moving into the next valley. Going through the back of the weave, through the back of that first new ring there. Going down through the ring that we placed previously. And at the same time, going down through the edge ring, closing it up. That ring falls to the back of your weave. And move to the next one. <laughs> Very good, Wes. <laughs> All right. Uh, going through the back of the new ring there. And this time we're coming around, going up through the previous ring that we added and through the edge ring and closing up. And again, you just do that all the way to the edge of your bracelet. And that's pretty much what your work looks like on both sides. Get that in a better spot. There we go. So then all you need to do is flip your work around and do the same on the other edge. So again, making sure the V is pointing towards you. Just so simply through both of those rings, nothing fancy. Close it up and let that ring fall to the front of the weave towards you. And we go down to the next. V formation go through the back then we're going down through that ring that we just added at the same time going through the uh, edge ring close it up that ring falls to the back of your weave okay next V in the line We come up through the back of the new ring. We bring it around and we continue going up through the ring that we just added before and through that edge ring. Close it up. Can't get hold of it properly. I've opened it up a bit too far. There we go. Close it up. Okay, and the next V, go through the back, down through the top of the previous ring, through the edge ring, close it up. And the last one, it doesn't really, um, Jane, it doesn't scooch it up. You don't need to add particularly any extra length to um, compensate for it. Okay, we go through the back, around the front. This time we go up through the previous ring, up through the edge ring, and we close it up. Is that one of the cats coming in? And that's it, guys. Gridlock Byzantine. So is everybody cool with that? Are we still talking about Odd Thomas? Is everybody cool? Are we good? Are we done? All right. 
I guess since nobody's commented, we're gonna go. We're good. What's your finger in the air for? It's a little bit behind. It's quite a bit behind by the looks of it. Yeah. Which makes it really awkward for me. All good. Easy to understand. Beautiful. Excellent. All right. Beautiful. Oh, it is not Jen. Stupid woman. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's that's it. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to get some pieces finished and um, pop them up on Aussie Mailers for us. We'd love to see it. Last attempt involved nightmare on Elm Street right before bed. Yeah, that's not a good idea, Kelly. <laughs> not right before bed. <laughs> it's not vodka either, Susie. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's it. We're done. We're good. All right. So, yeah, picture is um, I'm I'm a minute or so ahead of you guys. So, as I'm saying it, you guys are you know don't get that for a minute or so, which is why I'm sitting here feeling like I'm talking to myself sometimes because you're still all caught up with what happened in my past. All right, so I don't really have um, much else to talk about tonight. Um, only the reminder that we're coming up. Um, we've opened up registrations for December. Uh, Mail Club. Don't forget we won't be doing the live videos for December, so we will get all the kits and all the tutorials out to you at once. Uh, we won't be dribbling them out like we, you know, well, we won't be letting you know what they are each week. You'll know what they all are. And um, so that will be coming out at the end of November. Um, yeah, we may get videos done, but they won't be live um, if we have time. And we don't have a lot of time in December, so it may not happen. Um, and that's about it. I don't think we've got anything else. We're still, uh, we've got all the advent calendars out. That took a monumental effort. I've never folded so many little pieces of paper before. Uh, and so now we will start working on the Aussie Mail 12 Days of Christmas sale. So we hope to have uh, something up about that for you guys soon. And, um, yeah, so we're just busy getting ready for that, getting ready for Christmas. Um, that's our main aim at the moment. So next Wednesday we'll put up the new event for the next weave and um, hopefully we'll see you guys next Saturday. That's it. I haven't missed anything important, have I, Christopher? Okay, beautiful. All right, well, I'm off to have dinner. Maybe uh, a board game or two. Well, we don't have many kids here tonight at the moment, do we? Um, and we'll catch you all next week. So thank you very much for coming along, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Don't forget to pop any finished weaves in Aussie Mailers. Really like to see what you're doing. Um, if you're finding you have any difficulties, let us know. And uh, we'll try to help you. But it's um, it's not too difficult. It's just keeping that um, gridlock bit, I think. All right, guys. So thank you very much. Um... In class today, what class is that, Annette? Party at mom. Yeah, there's always a party on here, Susie. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Bye.